The HTC Vive is a hugely popular head-mounted display uh, manufactured by HTC and developed uh, in collaboration with Valve, the company behind the Steam game portal. When you create games for the HTC Vive, you can sell them on the Steam store. And if you make non-games, um, apps of different kinds in virtual reality, there is also the Vive board store. And how does this uh, platform work, basically? The different tracked elements, which includes the head-mounted display, the controllers, and also optionally additional tracking volumes, they have six degrees of freedom, and this means three rotation axes are measured and also three position axes. Basically, the objects can be tracked in space and it can be tracked what the, their orientation is. For the rotation tracking, they use low latency IMUs, that means uh, inertia measurement units, which are sensors that consist of gyroscopes and accelerometers and are used in virtual reality to measure rotation and know where the orientation of the of the play of the headset or the controller is when it comes to position the system is the system that is used to track is called the lighthouse which i'm going to explain in a second the head mounted display has a field of view of 110 degrees which means a horizontal angle of 110 degrees just so you know we humans see 180 degrees so now let's take a look at this lighthouse system. So imagine that you have your, your computer and you have your lighthouses, which are these black boxes that are placed in different positions of the room. And then you have your head mounted display and maybe the control, one of the controllers and the other controller. So the way the system works, the, the lighthouses are sending infrared light across the room. And the different tracked volumes have sensors that can detect these, uh, these signals and that allows them to know their position. And that position is then given to the software so that you are positioned in the right place in your virtual reality game. This works uh, similar to a real lighthouse, because if you have uh, a real lighthouse that can be used by a boat in this case to have an idea of where it is located. So it is that is where the name, that is why it is called like that, because it works really in the exact same way. Now, for us developers, some things we need to know. Um, games for the HTC Vive are the way that is uh, that this is built into the device is using an API called OpenVR, which is an open source uh, API created by Valve that allows uh, any manufacturer to uh, to to uh, to use it um, in order to have a standard when it comes to developing for uh, virtual reality. Now, the runtime where these applications are executed is called SteamVR, which is a which is a program that is part of the Steam software that you download and and install. So from that point of view, it is indeed an open API, but at the same time, um, it is linked to the Steam ecosystem. You can actually check out the, the code of this library on that link and also there is a discussion for the uh, group for developers um, that, that where they uh, solve issues about this um, API. And just so you know, this um, is in very, it, it's changing very often at the moment. There is a lot of new things coming out just because of how new virtual reality is in general. So a lot of the things, uh, it's good to, to keep an eye on the changes that occur uh, when you are developing games for this platform. When it comes to Unity, the head-mounted display is actually supported natively. So you don't need to install anything in order to have the, HD, uh, the, the, the both the position and rotation tracking of your head-mounted display working in Unity. That works out of the box. When it comes to controllers and the track volumes, at least at the time of this recording, you have to install a plugin Unity you, um, via the 
Unity Asset Store. It's called Steam VR, and then you have to use the Steam VR API to access this volume. So we're not going to look at that in this lesson. Um, and you need, of course, to have Steam and Steam VR installed in your computer. Um, what's great about this is that there are multiple headsets out there that are supporting OpenVR and you can use any of them with the same system. Even the Oculus Rift is compatible with OpenVR, so you can also develop for the Oculus Rift using OpenVR. Okay, so now let's go into Unity and let's have, uh, I'll, I'll show you what the setup is about and then we're gonna run our game for this platform. Okay, let's look at the different steps that we need to do in order to run our game in Unity. You need to download and install, and for that you need to create an account as well, Steam, which is an online store for video games. So you've downloaded Steam and you've installed Steam in your computer. Uh, it runs in, um, in all platforms. And then inside of your Steam application, go to Library, then Tools, and in the list of tools, find Steam VR and install that from, from here. Um, Steam VR is a runtime where games that use the Open VR API uh, run. So basically, all the games that you build with Open VR need to have Steam VR as a runtime. That is how they are uh, run on your device. So we've installed Steam uh, VR, and now I want to show you a few things in Unity. So in Unity, when you are working with um, Open VR, the position of your camera should ideally be set in here to zero, because the uh, height of uh, the height of your headset is going to be added to this position here. So if um, wh what you would do, for example, in mobile VR, is that you would set a certain height here, for example, 1.5. That's a very short person, but still, um, you would set a certain height that is expected for a person that will give the person the kind of perspective that they would have. Um, however, in when working with OpenVR, you start on zero and then the height of your headset is going to be added. So you are going to end up with your actual height in the game. So that is something to consider. I'm going to set then this to zero. Um, before we can actually run the game, we need to make sure that our room is set up correctly. What we're doing in this video is look at the standing experience. We're not using the controllers here. And when you're not using the controllers, you don't need to install anything additional in Unity. Everything will be will work natively in Unity. Um, if you were to use the controllers, you have to install the Steam VR uh, Unity plugin from the Unity Asset Store, but we're not covering that now. Okay, um, so let me show you how this um, how this room setup works. So you have to run SteamVR, and in SteamVR um, you go to run your room setup, and in here we were going to select we're going to select standing only, and then you need to make sure that your headset is within the the tracking area. And then um, you need to uh, make your headset uh, point towards the screen and calibrate that center like so. And after that, this is where we configure the floor. And like I said, the actual height of the device is going to be added to the uh, game. So in this case, um, all I have to do is just place my headset in the floor in some area that is tracked and I'll, I'll leave this to zero so that we are setting the floor. So we are setting the floor here that worked fine and we are done with our setup. Okay, now we can build our game. So I'm gonna go and go to file, build settings and I'm gonna make sure that PC, Mac, Mac um, Linux standalone is selected. I'm going to switch platforms in case that wasn't selected. You have to make sure that your scene uh, is here, the scenes of your game are here, and then go to player settings. In player settings, uh, you can enter the company name, the name of your game, a few other fields like I, um, the icon. Uh, but what, uh, what I want to show you is I'm gonna scroll down and go to other settings. And in other settings, I'm gonna make sure that virtual reality supported is checked. So 
it's going to be like that by default. I'm going to make sure that that is checked. And then uh, th there's there might not be anything in there. So let's uh, clear that list. The list is empty. And go. I go to plus and then I go to select open VR. OK, so we have that selected. Cool. Uh, let me close this for now. And now I'm going to press play. And just like so, we uh, we have our uh, I'm using the HTC Vive here and I can stand up and I'm located in my platform in my virtual reality game. And if I use the left button click, it needs to be clicked on the game screen. Um, I start moving. So let me make this a little bit bigger. So you can look around and it, lo it all looks really good quality, really, really sharp. Um, that is when you run it from the from the editor. And if we go to our camera, I can show you how the height of the camera is being set by the height at which I have it right now, which I'm seated with the headset on my head. So if I move it up, it goes up. If I move it down, it moves down. And one thing to um, one thing is that for some reason, if the say you move the the lighthouses, and then all of a sudden you are uh, in a position say x equal two, so you're off the of the central area when you're developing uh, and a really quick way when you're developing to recenter the position, basically to set it at zero um, so that your current position is zero. Um, let me show you how that can be done. So I'm positioned in a, at a certain height, a certain X, certain Z. And if I want to force myself to be in zero, so to sort of reset the position, I can go to Steam VR and I can go to settings. And then in settings, you can go to developer and then go to uh, find here, scroll down, quick calibrate. And that forces the, the camera, it centers it to be in zero again. Obviously, you can then still move because you're still being tracked. But see how this actually made us be under the area. So for some reason, the headset is, is not tracking right now. I probably shouldn't have done that while playing the game. Um, so I think that kind of broke it. Like, let's, let's try again. Yeah, so here we go. See how you know, we are now like kind of at the ground level because I did that reset. And the only way to get the other position back will be to run the room setup again. Okay, the other thing I wanted to show you was how we can build the game. Um, so you can go to build settings and you can you can pick build here or build and run. So let's go and build and run. And what we build here is just the executable. So I've created a folder called builds inside of my game project. And in here, I already built it for the Oculus and I, I can build it now for the HTC Vive. You can call this however you want. I just called it like that to differentiate the two of them. And then uh, we have this building process that can take uh, a few minutes. And our game is built. So this is just like running a normal, uh, normal Unity game. Um, so it's just loading and I have that game that I just that I just built obviously with the position reset. So I should run my room setup again to get the right position. And actually in the real game, the quality is always better than the one, the quality in the Unity editor, just so you know. Sometimes in the editor you see artifacts, which are like kind of like stains on some of the colors and some of the, the surfaces. And this looks a lot more clean, a lot sharper. So I'm going to close this now. And that is how this process works. So as you can see, this is supported natively by, by Unity, which is great. And the, at the time of this recording, the controllers are not support, supported natively. So you have to download the SteamVR SDK plugin into your Unity project. And uh, yeah, so we got this working. And now let's continue with the course.